yes guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to a brand new video ask the tech on luton town tomorrow at exactly 9 30 p.m and that is a massive advantage for arsenal because we need to bounce back and luton are a side that we can bounce back from sorry to say but as well arsenal are playing before liverpool and before manchester city that is another massive massive advantage you beat luton town you you, you keep your advantage against manchester city who are playing Aston villa by the way uh, that is going to be an entertainer and then you put pressure on liverpool who definitely uh, will beat or should beat sheffield united but of course that pressure will be mounting they're playing on a thursday and then they play on a sunday against manchester united so i think Arsenal have the advantage as we take on luton on uh, on wednesday tomorrow we're going to be diving into who starts in this game should Mikel Arteta rotate definitely in my opinion this is a game that allows you to play the likes of thomas Partey. um you know to start them in games it's a game that allows you to reintroduce the likes of gabriel martinel who didn't start off the weekend and probably um test out a replacement for soccer and maybe just let him sit on the bench for this game just to not uh, not to take any uh, you know chances with his injury hit the like button subscribe to the channel as well i'm happy to have you back uh you know in the morning i've not recorded in the morning for quite some time let's get into it right so in goal i think david dreyer is um is, is the number one obviously against manchester city apart from that crucial nathan Eke save i didn't see anything there in that game for him to do and i don't think um he was uh, you know uh, awful in any way shape or form now i think in this game against luton is going to be a key player because arsenal really like to uh, love to um you know start on a quick counter and again i think clubs like luton clubs like sheffield clubs like West Ham, they will have their times when they want to have a go ag against arsenal we know that the, the likes of our show are very good in the air so we'll know that they will be trying to bring in those crosses into the penalty area and that's where the problem is going to be from you know for, for luton because david dry is very very good at collecting those crosses but also not that uh, just that he's also very good at starting counters um when he crosses you know collects those crosses so it's gonna be a very very interesting encounter to see how he bounces back to his normal game after that stalemate against Manchester City for him uh it was a boring boring game so David Dry in goal um I hope everybody agrees because if you don't agree with this one then I don't know um the, uh, of course William Saliba and Gabriel should be back at the center back um as the uh, as the pairing I thought they really really did very well uh against Manchester City now I've been I've seen a few people criticize Arsenal for the way he played against Manchester Manchester City and I actually don't understand it I thought that we went to the Etihad Stadium to make sure that we don't get beat first and foremost but also uh, if if time allows time didn't allow um, for us to beat Manchester City I still think that um, that game would have ended 0-0 even if it was 120 minutes or 150 minutes I think Manchester City um, were very careful in that game they did want us to um, you know catch them on the break and expose them they wanted to leave no room for error and in order to do that they are to defensively be uh, you know uh, you know switched on as well as the attack and you cannot serve two masters at the go but one of the uh, you know things to point out in that game was this uh back line and i spoke about it yesterday in the five things we learned that gabriel and saliba oh my god absolutely absolutely genius from these two to keep arling harland and phil Foden out of the game but also just to make sure that um uh, when Manchester City formed a five in midfield, one of Gabriel and Saliba was always okay to drop into the midfield and form a 5v5. And of course, that meant that Saliba or Gabriel, either, or, um, either of, the, or, of the two who had stayed back, had to deal with Alan Haaland alone. And we did that very, very well. This, this, this centre-back pairing, I can only compare it to, I don't know, I think Vidic and Ferdinand? Th that that is the center back pairing i can compare it to because in during my years at arsenal i as an as an arsenal fan i've not seen arsenal have such a back line we have had lauren koscioni um was it lauren koscioni and vermelin did, did we have koscioni and vermelin maybe I, I think that was quality um we did have color uh, uh as well but 
and maybe Galas, but that wasn't really, really, really the quality that you get from Gabriel and Saliba, especially this campaign when Gabriel has turned into a leader. Okay, so I think the centre back pairing stays as the same uh, from the weekend. I think Ben White stays as the right back, and I think for me, Kivio comes back um, into the starting eleven. Now, this is where we will have a lot of disagreements. Now, I think Bernardo Silva did have his goal at Jakub Kivio. But I don't think Kivio was decimated. I don't think he was blown out of proportion. I don't think he was blown out of the water by Bernardo Silva. I might have to rewatch the clips again, okay? So I'm going to watch the clips again and see Bernardo Silva against Arsenal. But I don't... Maybe it's because of defense, the, the defensive duties that um, Gabriel was actually doing. Um, you understand? I understand. But I'm not really sure Kivio actually had a bad game, had a poor game. But I'll watch it again. I'll, I'll roll it back. But the one thing that we need to focus on is Luton Town and their nature. They will try to get Arsenal on the break and you need a solid back three because I am very sure that um, uh, Ben White will be inviting. Alternatively, what Mikel Arteta should do and what he could do, he could play Alexander Zichenko instead of Kivio. That means that Zichenko invites in midfield alongside Rice um, and the likes of Pate and Gino, like we will see in the midfield setup. And then Gabriel, Saliba and Ben White will be forming that back three. Either way, it works for me, but I would prefer Kivio in this game because it allows us to defend very strongly and very, very, um, you know, very neatly as well. That's what I love about Kivio. It's what I love about um, Tomiyasu as well. Okay, so when we run into the midfield setup, it's going to be a little bit different from what we saw. I think Thomas Pater, for me, I was impressed when he came on, came on against Manchester City. I think Declan Rice was superb. And I think Martin Odegaard was absolutely superb as well in terms of pressing, but also in terms of being the outlet that's trying to create chances for us. So it would be Partey, Odegaard and Declan Rice for me in that midfield three. And this is my problem with um, Jorginho. Do I have a problem with Jorginho? Obviously, I do have a problem. It's the legs. It is the legs. Now, in a game like this, Mikel Arteta will play Jorginho. 100%. Mark me. Mark me. Out of 100. Mark me. This is my prediction. In a game like this, against Luton Town at the Emirates Stadium, Mikel will play Jorginho. And he will be 100% right. Because Jorginho just allows you to improve your creativity on the pitch, even when you're playing th you know, two defensive midfielders in Declan Rice and Jorginho. We know the creative ability he's got. He created two chances for Gabriel Martinelli against Crystal Palace within, a, within I, I think, three or two minutes. That is how beautiful he is from creating in, from, from creating, um, in deeper areas. Now, why I've gone with Thomas Partey, he was brilliant, very, very brilliant against Manchester City when he came on. And he almost, almost, almost contributed to what would have been a winner against Manchester City because he plays that ball from, deep, from, from, from his own defense into Martin Odegaard. And Odegaard is very bright and very brilliant. He knows that Trossard has made the run. He plays that ball into the path of Leandro Trossard. It is well weighted, but of course, Trossard doesn't see the run of Gabriel Martinelli. That was the only missing piece, right? That was the only missing piece. So with Partey, we know he's defensively good, and that would create a mark on the mind of Declan Rice that I have a guy that is defensively as good as I am, and therefore I can go forward and not even look back. I want to see Declan Rice going forward with that defensive assurance of a player like Thomas Partey. And that's why I want Arsenal to sign Yosha Kimmich in the summer, because Yosha Kimmich allows Declan Rice to go to the next level. He allows him to be a Gerrard. He allows him to be a Frank Lampard. He can't take penalties. He can't take free kicks. He's taking corners very well. He's scoring goals. He's scoring headers with the boots as well so I, I want to see him with a player like Thomas Partey but I think Tom Thomas Partey honestly would decimate that Luton midfield they are stubborn they have Rossi Barkley who I love a lot by the way as a player I don't know why but obviously he is absolute trouble uh, so with um with this it means that Odegaard goes back to his traditional uh, number 10 role and Declan Rice in this game I won't be surprised he will be going back to his not really traditional but what we are used to see him doing um, in this Arsenal jersey, creating chances and scoring goals 
a little bit higher up the pitch like Xhaka was last campaign. Now, on the forward three, we will have problems with each other here. But I think Trossard should start in this game, right? I think Kai Havers should start in this game. We, we will all agree that Kai will start and should start. And Gabi Martinelli, for me, uh, should start as well. Now, the reason as why Nelly didn't start against, um, against City is because we were not really sure of his fitness levels. But when he comes on, he creates a difference. He creates an outlet for Mikel Arteta. He creates an outlet for Arsenal. And we almost score through his movement. Uh, Leandro Trossard, brilliant when he, came, when he came on. But why I want him to play instead of Saka for around 60 minutes. Saka is fatigued. That's according to Mikel Arteta. And I don't have a problem with Saka being fatigued. But I have a problem with this Arsenal and England national team, you know, whatever, lying. They are lying about an injury that we all know he is carrying. So Luton away and Luton at home are different encounters. We are playing at the Emirates Stadium. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of an early kickoff. Why don't you play Leandro Trostad for 60 minutes? If by 60 minutes Arsenal are 2 nil up, don't bring on Saka. Bring on, bring on Rhys Nelson or Gabriel Jesus. If, um, uh, if he's still tight then you can bring on Saka because we know he can unlock defenses and he can be our game changer for the whole of the campaign so that would be my starting 11 against Luton Town a couple of changes and this is what I would love to see before we get out of this place I'd love to see um uh, Fabio Vieira shot number 21 I don't know why I put him 22 uh Fabio Vieira come on for Martin Odegaard Again, Odegaard is going to be very, very crucial um, for us in the running. So you need to rest him. I'd love to see Gigino come in for Thomas Partey. I don't think Partey has a 90 minutes in him so far yet. Um, I would love to see Gabriel Jesus come in for um, Gabriel Martinelli because Martinelli is important and he will need his rest. And of course, Saka, if things don't work out, can come on for Leandro Trossard and then we can literally go back to that um, you know, humble setup that we did put in against Manchester City. Let me know if you agree with this and I'll speak to you right in the next one.